Let's talk about the Microsoft buyout of GitHub for $7.5 billion. That's billion with a B dollars. $7.5 billion. Now, I'm going to talk about the whys, the whats, the wheres, and also my predictions on what might happen in the future with GitHub. I've been a web developer since 2006 in the professional sense. I graduated in 2006 as a web developer. I did a web development degree. Before that degree, I did two other courses uh, in programming and other IT-related bits and pieces. Before that, I was doing websites for fun. So I've seen a, a huge change and evolution in web development since the early days, since I started. I mean, I, I remember working on Netscape Navigator as a browser. I remember the IE6 days, the Active X days. I remember the embrace, the extend and the extinguish mentality of Microsoft, where it would just gobble up little companies um, and then just puff them out like a, a fag butt being, being uh, stood on. I remember the, the trials and tribulations of trying to get websites working in browsers built by Microsoft. Yeah, it's been an interesting journey. It's been a very interesting journey. And I should say that I am now a freelance open source developer, right? So I work with open source technologies uh, day in and day out. But that was never really the case. I also uh, worked on ASP back in the day. That was the first ever uh, programming language that I used on the web. I was using ASP, I was using Access, and I was using uh, VB6. Oh dear. But why, why has this happened? Well, GitHub, a, a while ago, mentioned that they were in difficulty. And that really should have been the time that we kind of open source guys would have stepped up. Um, because you could, in hindsight, think, well, this was now, this was an inevitable thing, right? If you think about the choices of who is going to buy GitHub, and you have to remember, GitHub has something in the region of 27 million repositories, code repositories. It isn't like just taking over just a normal company. With, you, you got, you've got infrastructure to take over. It's, it's a big, big thing, and it's, it's embedded, it's part of the open source culture. So why on earth did this happen? I mean, why did Microsoft decide to buy GitHub? This, in my opinion, was inevitable. Um, I didn't expect it to be Microsoft. I was more uh, thinking it would possibly be AWS and Amazon, uh, but it's Microsoft. I think it's a very clever move by Microsoft, and I'll get into that in just a second. Uh, but GitHub was in difficulty. They had the car, but they didn't have the fuel to fuel the car, to move the car, uh, and to keep the car running, okay? Microsoft have bought the car, and they have the fuel to keep it going. So I'm going to use that analogy in just a second a little bit more. Now, what does this mean for Microsoft? Well, they do not own your code. GitHub didn't own your code. GitHub will still be GitHub for, I believe, at least a year. It's going to take a year to the end of this calendar year in order to sort out um, the various legal bits and pieces, dotting the I's and crossing the T's, that kind of thing. That The whole acquisition um, takes time, okay? So I don't think much is going to change in the interim. But Microsoft now has, in my opinion, a very good stance to start aiming fire at other companies such as Amazon. They now have something to um, develop. They have the Visual Studio, right, which is ha has has improved leaps and bounds uh, since since I used it. Then they have the, a way to deploy. Okay, so they have the whole Azure suite. And now they have a place to distribute code, right, to store code. So they have from development to distribution to deployment. That is an extremely, extremely attractive package for a developer to have. Uh, also, they have LinkedIn. So they have a way of um, marrying up developer jobs with developer code, okay, 
That's quite an interesting concept to have. One that GitHub just couldn't embrace in its current stand. The thing is, us open source developers are extremely wary, a little bit skeptical, very worried, and rightly so, about what is going to happen with Microsoft. Being that they've gone through a whole lot of embrace, extend, and extinguish, being that they are a company who who like to only play by their own rules sometimes with web. And it makes us very nervous. But let's just be clear. Microsoft has evolved a lot since those days. They are actually contributing a lot and a lot of code to open source. Not only code, but just manpower, documentation, ideas, So they are embracing the open source movement. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, you can't be open source and closed source at the same time. You know, from a purist point of view, you can't have one and the other. Well, you can. You can. And for those who are saying that GitHub sold out on open source, who went against the open source ethos, right? GitHub was an open source. If it was, then you would see a whole fleet of GitHub lookalikes suddenly appearing. Well, you're not, because GitHub itself was an open source, not fully open source. Some of its code that ran GitHub was open source, but not all of it. You couldn't just suddenly replicate GitHub, right? So in that sense, it's, it's, it's similar to Microsoft in the sense that it's not open source, but it contributes to open source, right? So those those arguments, in my opinion, are completely invalid. Now, one thing that I have seen a lot of quite frequently uh, in the in the past few days is a mass exodus from GitHub to another variant, say Bitbucket or GitLab. One thing I want to just just say right now as a recommendation is a whoa whoa whoa. Be very careful about moving your code. Code dependencies is extremely fragile, okay? you got to think about not only your customers, but the customers of the customers of your dependents, all right? <laughs> so don't just suddenly go, right, I'm taking that and I'm plonking it here without thinking about the impacts that that might have if someone is reliant on your code being in that location. So if you are thinking about moving, okay, then do it in a a very logical, methodic way, all right? So ensure that your unit tests work, ensure that you've got a blog post written about it, you ensure that you've given enough time and warning. Don't just suddenly do it because that will cause outage. And the last thing us open source developers want is things breaking and becoming fragile because of this movement. So just cool your jets and be careful. Now, obviously, if you have a private... Uh, repository, and I have heard people who are concerned about Microsoft and they have a private GitHub repository. That's something slightly different from having a public repository. Um, And those who are saying that Microsoft now have ownership of your code, well, if it was public in GitHub, then anybody could technically download that code. They don't have ownership, obviously, of that code. They have to obviously adhere to the license. But I, I'm seeing a lot of um, sensationalism. I'm seeing a lot of things about people hating on Microsoft and disliking what's happening and seeing that they're going to move as a way of protest. But one thing that I just want to make clear is moving code from one place to another doesn't just impact you, but it impacts the people who rely on that code. So what is my predictions? What's going to happen now that uh, Microsoft have ownership of GitHub? Well, I don't have a crystal ball, but I can see this going into one or two ways. Yes, there's part of me who is still concerned about the whole embrace, extend and extinguish. That would be a very dark time. And I don't think Microsoft would do that to GitHub. What they might do in the in the worst case scenario is they might make it more difficult for open source developers 
to use a Microsoft product. Because you have to think about it now, this is a Microsoft product and Microsoft is traditionally closed source. So why would they want to keep it as open as it is? Well, to counter that argument, you have to look at all the things that they've been doing in the open source world. This might be a step in that direction, and I do hope it is. But my realistic prediction, which is kind of optimistic, is that they are using this as a branding uh, technique. They want to show that they are responsible to look after and maintain open source code. They want to distance themselves from the dark days where Microsoft were not seen as the greatest company um, and they were a competitor to open source. I would like to think that this will actually um, be a benefit to the open source community rather than a negative. That's kind of my stance on this. And I don't think GitHub will keep its name in, say, three years' time. It's a Microsoft product now, so Microsoft will have its own badge on GitHub. And I go back to the whole development, distribution, deployment package that they now have. That is a package, and I think what they'll do is they'll promote that as such, which means that you now have the ability to store code, develop code and distribute code in a Microsoft ecosystem. That is extremely powerful and I'm, I'm interested to see where it's going. So Microsoft have bought the car, they have the fuel, it's now time to see where they drive. If you haven't done so already, please do check out the howtocodewell.net website. This is going to be home of the How To Code Well YouTube channel. It's going to have all of my courses. At the moment, I've got uh, the Docker course, the Linux course, the PHP uh, command line course. We also have the Udemy courses links as well. I'm going to be updating and adding this, plus links to the uh, newsletter too. Also, there are some books. Um, so if I go to the shop, we have programming books that I recommend that uh, programmers use to learn and enhance their skills in various fields. So we have HTML, CSS. Uh, MySQL, Python, and PHP, and Docker as well, and there's going to be more coming soon. Also, the howtocodewell.net website has links and discount codes for the Docker in Motion course that I've created for Manning Publication. Here is the table of contents. This is all of the units that you will be learning that is included in the course. So all about Docker Compose, how to store data, building a database, all of that good stuff. Thanks ever so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, please do subscribe. Make sure you do something with the bell icon. Like the video if you found it useful. Thanks ever so much. Happy coding. See you again next time. Cheers. Bye.